I have researched dozens of world maps and found these 30 to explain everything. For example, this one will change the way how you view the world. These are countries divided into three groups based on their biggest trading partners. Whether they trade the most with Germany, China or the USA. But this map is totally wrong. In reality, these data are from 1990. If we fast forward to today, the situation radically changes. China's popularity rapidly grew, especially in the developing regions. The USA was left behind, now trading mostly with the closest countries. Meanwhile, Germany is keeping its European market, but it is very unlikely that it will overcome China anywhere else. Well, the huge growth in trade has its dark side. And it's really dark. Just look at this map showing the CO2 emissions. In other words, the darker the country is, the more it is polluting our planet. China is clearly the biggest polluter of them all. But now hold your breath. It is emitting 33% of the world's CO2 pollution. That is absolutely crazy. In comparison, the USA is a big polluter too. But its 13% are still almost three times less. In another perspective, China is emitting more CO2 than these 185 countries together. I need to emphasize that we are talking about all of them together. In one way, it just makes sense that you would create more pollution in places that are so densely populated as China or India. This map shows the population density around the world. I mean, how could you create any pollution in a country like Mongolia, where only two people share every square kilometer, making it the most sparsely populated country in the world? On the other side of the spectrum is Bangladesh, one of the most densely populated countries in the world. In this tiny land, you have to share every square kilometer with another 1,268 people. That technically leaves you with 0.8 square meters for yourself. In fact, if we draw a circle about this size on this exact place on the world map, it would contain half of the world's population. I mean, look how huge our Earth's surface is in comparison to this tiny circle. And still more than 4 billion people call this place home. Another way how to put this is by splitting our world into the following 10 sections. Each of them now contains 10% of the world's population. America is very sparsely populated on a globe scale, comparing this huge section with the super tiny ones in Asia. The same is true for Oceania, as that continent makes up only 0.5% of the total global population. However, if you would like to know what the future will look like, this map is the answer. It shows the average birth rates in each country. The darker the color is, the faster is the population growth. Straight away you can see that Asia is not the leading region anymore. Indeed, Asian countries are growing at the same pace as most of the American countries. The huge population growth is taking place all over Africa these days. Niger is the fastest growing one with a growth of 4% every year, which means more than 1 million babies with its only 25 million population. Meanwhile, Europe is slowly going extinct, with many of its countries having negative population growth. Latvia, as the worst of them all, is shrinking by 1% every year. The following map is a set face check with reality. This is the Global Hunger Index. A darker color means a higher percentage of people facing life-threatening hunger. The most heartbreaking part is the realization of how much this map correlates with the previous one. Countries with the youngest populations are also the ones with the biggest food shortages. Nevertheless, the world is a much better place than we sometimes believe. Check this out. This is what the hunger map looked like 20 years ago. It was significantly worse than it is now. You can see how much closer we got to the possible solution to the global hunger issue. Even though there is a lot of positive progress taking place everywhere, our world remains a complicated and somewhere cruel place to live. These are all the countries with an ongoing war on their territory. The Ukrainian-Russian war in Europe has been already going on for two years. Meanwhile, Latin America still remains the place of cartel fighting. And Africa is far from stability. 
Many reasons are behind the civil wars and terrorist activity in most of the African nations. Yemen, Syria and Myanmar are still being caught in the middle of a civil war. Factors like war or hunger are among many directly affecting how long you will live. These are countries sorted by their average life expectancy. People living in the darkest ones are expected to live the longest lives. Japan is the winner. If you are born there, chances are you will live 84 years on average. Sadly, this map reflects even more the bad situation in Africa. If you were born in Chad or Nigeria, your life is expected to last around 52 years. That is 32 year difference from Japan, which is really unfair. Question. Do you believe that the more money a country has, the higher the life expectancy will be? Well, the answer is that it depends. These are the countries sorted by their nominal GDP. For sure, there is some level of correlation between this one and the previous map, especially in the US, Western Europe and Australia. However, you can also spot some truly rich countries like Indonesia, Russia, India or Brazil with quite poor life expectancies. I guess the wealth of a country is not the same everywhere for their citizens. A good argument of why some countries with high GDP still remain relatively poor is the GDP per capita. In theory, it shows that although India has the same wealth as the UK, it just has to split it between 1.4 billion people. Mainly because of the crazy high population, most of the South and Southeast Asian countries are at the lowest ranks regarding GDP per capita. However, Africa is in an even worse place. According to the IMF, the poorest country in the world is Burundi. It's estimated that the GDP per capita there is only $246. Could you imagine surviving a whole year with only $246? Coming next is the corruption index. A corrupted country could negatively influence the distribution of its wealth to the citizens. In Europe, we can see the transition from not corrupted West to a slightly corrupted East. In Asia, the situation is far more complicated. Besides the few exceptions like Japan, South Korea, Bhutan or United Arab Emirates, most of the countries are quite a lot corrupted. The same situation is in Africa and South America, although few countries seem to have functioning legitimate governments. The next map could further help us understand the overall political freedom around the world. These are the most and least democratic countries. Well, some of the most corrupt countries seem to have at least a functioning democracy. But that's not true for others. China, North Korea, Afghanistan, Belarus, Venezuela and the big part of Africa and Asia are far from being democratic. Regimes in these countries are mostly authoritarian, with a limited or non-existent right to vote for their leader. At the end of the day, what is the most important thing you need to live a happy life? I would say it's definitely peace. The darkest blue countries on this map are the most peaceful in the world. On the contrary, the red ones are nothing close to peace. Europe is the most non-violent region in the world, while in Asia it depends where you look. The southern east part of the continent is mostly avoiding violence, which is not true for Middle South Asia and especially the Middle East. There, they are still a long way from a peaceful life. In America and Africa, the situation varies from country to country. Could you, without any hint, guess what this map is depicting? I hope it's more than clear to you that these are the most prevalent religions in the world. At first sight, we can see the dominance of Christianity in America, Europe, Oceania and the southern half of Africa, with around 2.4 billion followers. The second largest religion is Islam, and although it may seem significantly smaller than Christianity, it is only half a billion followers behind it, dominating North Africa, the Middle East and Central Asia. Further east, the main religion transforms into Hinduism and Buddhism. Only few countries practice folk religions or are irreligious. Lastly, let's not forget Judaism. The only Jewish majority country in the world is Israel. It has only 15 million followers worldwide. 
let's switch to a more lightweighted topic. I find this simple map one of the most interesting I have ever seen. The purple countries are those with a higher ratio of male population, while the orange ones have more women than men. It may seem that the world is dominated by females, but the interesting part comes when you find out that for example in Qatar there is 75% of the male population to only 25% female population. In United Arab Emirates it's 69% and in Oman it's 66% of the male population. Well, it's not some trick of the nature. A likely explanation is the high number of workers coming to these countries, which are usually males. The next map is one of those which in the end makes sense, but you have never really thought about it. The colors on the map indicate the natural hair color of people around the world. I mean, I know that a lot of people have dark hair, but honestly, did you know that it is almost the whole world? Meanwhile, Europe especially the north part of the continent, is the hotspot for people with blonde hair. It seems like from there it only gets darker and darker. Europeans are also special in one more way. They are extremely tall in comparison with any other region in the world. The Netherlands, Montenegro and Estonia are the top 3 countries with the tallest population in the world. Anybody from these countries is on average 176 cm tall. On the other hand, South America and Southeast Asia are the smallest ones. Guatemala, Laos and Nepal are the smallest of them all, with an average height of 157 cm, a 20 cm difference. Well, your size from ground to sky is one thing, but the size of your waist is another. These are the most obese countries in the world. In the darkest countries, more than 30% of the population is battling obesity. We all know that the obesity situation in the USA is a problem, which is now spreading south into Mexico and even Venezuela. But did you know that another region affected by this issue is the Middle East? Syria, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates together with Egypt and Libya are growing in size as well. Lastly, a fact that most people don't know is that most obese country in the world is actually Nauru. This small Pacific island has around 61% of the obese population. In fact, the 10 most obese countries in the world are all located in Oceania. The main reason is that their limitation of space and their remoteness force them to import a lot of canned and processed food, therefore lacking fresh and healthy meals. If you are watching this video, chances are that you are literate, which means that you can write and read in your native language. All of us take it for granted these days, but honestly, be glad for it. Even today, a non-negligible number of people around the world don't have this opportunity. This map shows the percentage of the country's population that is literate. This one is luckily another example of fastly improving situation. However, a big part of Africa and some countries in Asia are still lacking a functioning educational system. Just imagine living a daily life without the ability to read or write. Let's take a look at the one topic that ultimately influences any other that we have seen today. It's the geography itself. This map shows all the deserts and mountain ranges on our planet. And it's super interesting when you realize how much this affects the way the world looks today. Just compare this one with the population density. It makes sense that people won't live in deserts or mountains. Usually the mountains create the deserts. Just take a look at the ants or at Australia. Another interesting fact is how precisely mountains create some of the country's borders, historically dividing nations from one another. The next map is directly connected to the previous one. This map shows the average annual temperature around the world. Just look at the Himalayas, how perfect temperature border they make, trapping all the heat coming from the ocean and not allowing it to go any further. Overall, we can see how huge the temperature difference there is between a tropical climate around the equator and a temperate climate mainly in the north. If you are from the USA, this one might come in handy. If not, it is a curious observation of how the USA views the world. 
This is a travel advisory from the US government. In the green countries, you can feel completely safe. In the yellow ones, you should exercise increased caution, as there is slightly higher probability of something bad happening to you. If some of the orange countries are your final destination, you should reconsider traveling there. And traveling to the red ones is only for crazy people, and it is not recommended under any circumstances. So, bearing that in mind, let's see which countries are actually visited the most. The darker color indicates more tourists every year. France is dominating this metric with over 80 million tourists visiting this lovely country annually. Right behind are Spain, the US, Turkey and Italy. The most visited country in Africa is Egypt, in Middle East it's Saudi Arabia, in Asia it is China and in Oceania it is of course Australia. On the contrary, the least visited country in the world is Tuvalu with only 3700 people visiting this tiny Pacific island every year. When traveling, you may need to communicate with other human beings. But how? Well, the safest bet is always English. This is the world, divided by English speakers in each country. I think in Europe you shouldn't have a problem finding an English speaker, as in most of the countries, one in three people should speak it at a sufficient level. It may get harder the more east you travel. And if you plan to travel to South America, you better sign up for that Spanish class right today. Another popular way of learning a language is Duolingo, a mobile application for learning languages. These are the most popular and most commonly learned languages in Duolingo around the world. Yes, English is the most popular by far. In the end, without speaking English, you couldn't watch this wonderful video. So I think you deserve to press the like button for having this ability. Meanwhile, Americans are trying to understand their Mexican brothers, while French is quite popular across Africa. The only thing I somehow don't get is Sweden. Is the Swedish so hard that you actually need to learn it at Duolingo or what's happening there? Now tell me, which side of the road is the correct one to drive on? Naturally, I think that it's the right side. However, I have no clue why. But 75 countries in the world are of a different opinion. Yes, all of the orange countries are driving their cars on the left side of the road. The number of them caught me by surprise, as I thought that this practice was a reality in way fewer countries. According to the United Nations, there are 193 countries in the world. While some of them have been around for hundreds of years, others exist just for a fraction of that time. This is a wonderful story of how today's world was formed, making these the 10 newest countries in the world. Many of them split from their former unions or republics, while others became independent. South Sudan is currently the newest country in the world. It gained independence from Sudan after several years of conflict between the two countries in 2011. And this is our world today. It is an amazing place that is worth understanding. To enhance your world knowledge even more, you should definitely watch this video next. Before you do so, please subscribe to my channel. It's the best way to support my work. Thank you and see you there.